Okay, so what we're looking at is why dimeric cast in action on an Intel Android phone wirelessly displaying on my TV screen. So to prove this, I'm just going to go to applications. And you can see what I'm doing here is happening up there. So pretty cool. Right, but, but actually not, not actually terribly cool because you want to see something really interesting and that's probably not the best use case. So let's go to an application and I'm going to go to something that I developed. So this is an application that is developed in HTML5. And I'm going to try this application out here. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calibrate this application. And that's because it's using sensors. So I want to calibrate at, you know, what angle I'm holding the device at. And what you should be able to see up there is a spaceship. I'm just going to tilt this guy back and left and right. And that ship moves around. Okay, so I, I've calibrated it. Now I'm going to go ahead and start my game. So I can go ahead and shoot at all these bad guys over here. Actually, what I should do is look at my screen. That's actually the way to play the game. Almost gone. There we go. Now another set of bad guys. So what's cool about this is I've turned my smartphone into a controller. I've actually turned it into a console arcade just by adding Wide Eye and Miracast to it. So lots of fun. And as you can see, this can be done via HTML5 using the uh, device orientation APIs. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill myself here and we'll quit this game. Okay, so let's look at another game, something that's available in the Google Store and developed a whole lot better than what I could do. Let's go to Dark Nebula. And Dark Nebula is a game that's optimized for x86, so it performs really well on my device. And again, I recommend everybody port your applications over to x86 so that they run best on Intel hardware. So I'm going to create a new game here. And like my game, this game leverages the sensors uh, in the device in order for you to play the game. So all I have to do is tilt my device, and I start moving along here and start picking everything up. But what you can really notice is how responsive this thing is. It's amazing. Really responsive. And you know, I actually prefer playing the game this way because I, I kind of have to bend over and, and look over at my screen as I'm tilting it in all directions. And here I can just kind of sit back and tilt the device and look at my TV screen. Um, and actually, I find that I play the game better this way. So I can imagine all sorts of applications and games that are designed to be played this way. Let me go a little bit more carefully. I'm talking too much, not paying attention to what I'm doing. So there we go. So we'll get through this. So you can see how responsive it is. There, there's really almost no latency at all with this. Um, and like I said, I'm much better with this game doing it this way on my TV than I am. See, I'm, I'm just using one hand. I mean, it's so easy to do it this way. There we go. So um, I, I think that, you know, we could look at more interesting use cases, games, entertainment that are done with your phone where you can connect to the TV wirelessly. Um, maybe uh, uh, board games uh, so the family can sit around and play. Um, and other really interesting things that would entertain the family and groups who would be in front of a TV. So that's Intel's Wide Eye Miracast, available on Android devices, allowing you to turn your smartphone into a controller for your TV. Pretty cool.